Ok. So before, before doing uh, uh, a, a small example of our exam table in React, just to get started with components, an element, and JSX, let me go through this set of slides quite quickly, because most of these things we are going to see better than in the example. So I, I'm not wasting too much time on the slides. Uh, so which is the conceptual overview of how things work in React. So first of all, you have, let me go back, you have the render or the create node, hmm? create node.render, that attach a element to the target node, the one of get element by D that we have seen 10 minutes ago. Hmm? Uh, that element hmm, render hmm, an element element that is created with this create element or with JSX, it's the same. Um, and this element includes all its children. Mm? So this is a div with some buttons in it, so it includes everything, not only the div, but also the children. Uh, the element is of a certain type that is a component mm? that in JSX is just the name of the element we are going to create, like h1, button, container, etc. And this component is defined by a function that we we'll say uh, in an element tree and or it's predefined, like div, h1, etc. And the element tree, uh, the components can also define, use other elements that are parts of element tree, that are composed by elements, etc. Hmm? So elements, as I told you briefly before, are plain objects describe a component instance or a DOM node and its properties. So you have components that describe how they are made and then the element is the single description of how that component in that place, in that page, is rendered. Mm? So the component is how the button appear. The element is this button that appears like the one defined the component is red and has this specific text in it. Mm? That is compliant with the component's definition but is specific for that instance that part of the page, hmm? but still is a description of an element. And an element contains three information. The type of the element, hmm? that with JSX is just written as the tag name, the property, the props that are passed through to the element, if any, and the child, the children of this element. Hmm? So it's a div with some children in it. It's a div with a button, and inside the button maybe there is the text, or there is an image, or there is something else. Hmm? Uh, again, it's a description about how components appear in a specific part of the page. Hmm? Um, so what are these three things, types, props, and children? Uh, types is the DOM node representing the components, div, button, etc. Props is an object, it's a simple JavaScript object containing any attributes that are needed to be passed through the, to the element, hmm? uh, to, the child, to the children or to the components itself. They could be type, SRC, href, if they are uh, DOM-based hmm? components that derive from the DOM nodes, or could be custom properties if that is a custom components like color or language or hmm, whatever you prefer, it's, it's free. It's an object in which you can pass information to the component itself or to its children. And it's represented as, it's an object, so it has object properties in it with one exception, a few exceptions actually, uh, that are for reserved word in JavaScript. Hmm? So if you need to pass the CSS class as a prop, you cannot use class, because class is a reserved word in JavaScript. You have to use class name. 
if you need to pass the four attribute in HTML, it's HTML4, because four is a protected keyword in JavaScript for the loop. So for this case, there is a slight variation. The, cla the CSS class is not class, it's class name. Uh, the four is not four, is HTML4, to distinguish it between the four cycle and the four HTML element. Uh, and the children is a React node object that has to be a, a string, like the text content of the button, or another element, or a tree of elements that are contained inside the specific element. So again, a div with inside a button, with inside an image. Uh, as I told you, convention, DOM elements always lowercase, components always uppercase, um, and element three describe always portion of the virtual DOM, not of the DOM, but of the virtual DOM. Uh, we have already said that JSX is, JSX stands for JavaScript syntax extension, that is the syntax we are going to, to use, and as or, all, this has tags, all tags must be either closed, so H1, minor, H1, major, something, and then closing the tag, or self-closing the tag, um, and all the elements, the type, the props, and the children are present here. So my button is the type of the component, color blue and shadow size to add the props, and click me is the children, is the child in this case of this button that is a text because it's a button. Uh, components are then expanded during the rendering hmm, in, the, in the DOM. Hmm. So a button with a capital B color blue and text OK will be expanded in something like button, HTML button, class equal button, button blue, uh, and then in bold, is this an OK, etc. Hmm? Because this is how the button with the capital B describe to behave. So the text inside the button with the capital B, the component is bold, is always bold, bold written in bold. Hmm? So this is happening for all components. Hmm? So components rendered, uh, expanded to rendering, and if a component includes another component they, that is not, let's say, this custom, that component is then expanded hmm, in the chain until everything can be represented in HTML, in plain HTML nodes, div, button, uh, input, uh, A, etc. Hmm? the normal tag that we have. Um, JSX uh, is written as HTML, in that case as XML, but actually is JavaScript. Hmm? So it's valid everywhere a JavaScript uh, expression is valid. Where you can write JavaScript in React, you can write JSX, because it's actually JavaScript under certain, percept uh, under certain percept perception. Hmm? So not only in components, but also you can store an array of JSX if you want. And uh, you can also include it in parentheses if you want to have more clarity. Um, and clearly, before using component, you have to import it if it's not defined on the same file, because otherwise it's not working, given that a component is a function. So to use a function in a JavaScript file, you need to have either the function in the file or importing the function from another file. Um, Attributes in JSX are always passed as a string. Hmm? So color equal blue is, becomes color. An object properties with color with blue as a string. If you want to pass elements not as a string, like a number, etc., you have to enclose it inside the parentheses, like shadow size or log. Hmm? Otherwise, that will become um, strings. Hmm? And you want maybe true to be true the Boolean value or two, the number two, not the string. Hmm? So if you, you have to enclose it in this parenthesis. Uh, and you can also have, since it's JavaScript, you can also have uh, expressions. Hmm? So if warning level that is defined before, like in the case of color, is the bug, then the props colors will be gray, otherwise it will be the red. Hmm? So you can also compute props uh, on the fly hmm? if needed. Um, 
children, you have children, elements inside the children, you can have multiple children, could be uh, just sex, as I said before, could be text, etc. Um, and you can also have things like these, like in the const menu, in which you have an UL, that is the component, the element representing the UL um, DOM node. Then you can have, if logged in, then render the component user menu. Otherwise, if the user is not logged in on the application, render the login link. So you can have, and this is JavaScript, this is a, const, this is a variable menu. So you can have inside the variable, uh, JSX, and inside this JSX, other JavaScript. And inside this other JavaScript, other JSX. Because this is JSX, login link, user menu. This is JavaScript, but the output of this is JSX, because it's either user menu or login link. And this is still JSX, and this is JavaScript. Because JSX is actually JavaScript. So you, whenever you can use JavaScript, you can use JSX. Hmm? Uh, again, in this case, you want menu to be specifically one component or the other. User menu or login link, according to the fact that the user is logged in or not. And store it in a variable, because maybe you are going to use the variable later on. Hmm? Uh, and this expression in parentheses may be used to specify element children as well. So you can enclose it so that that operation is computed in JavaScript. Uh, keep in mind that undefined null and boolean are not rendered. Uh, so we will not render true or false or null, undefined. Uh, but it could be useful for conditional including children. So what is doing this code here, for instance? This code here is saying, in one line, if user level, that is a variable, a JavaScript variable defined somewhere in the page, is admin as a string, then render the admin menu. Then call the function render admin menu. Since true and false is not rendered, what happens here is that it creates the UL, it created the LE, then evaluate this. If this is true, it invokes this function, and this function is going to create another L1, Li, element, here, and put it here, or whatever is going to render admin menu. If this is false, this expression will, will be false, and so nothing will be displayed there. So instead of writing if user menu is admin, then render admin menu in one line, with this uh, structure, given that the true or false are not rendered, but just used for uh, interpreting um, expression, if you say that this is true, then this is a function that also this is true, and this is executed. And so here you put the components. And this is quite uh, idiomatic for JavaScript and JSX as a way to say, show something or don't show something. If it's true, the antecedent is true, I want to show the thing. If the antecedent is false, I'm not showing anything. Hmm? If you don't have um, alternative, if you want to show one thing or the other. Hmm? Clearly, you can also write something like this, hmm? like logged in user, question mark, etc. also here. This is just a different way to, to do the same thing. If you don't have alternative in this case, hmm? or render admin menu or nothing. Uh, the, the components can also access to all the children properties, all the children via the props.children if needed. Mm? So they get all the children that the elements have, either text or the writer elements. It's, it's a feature, mm? it's a uh, variable that is available as props, even if it's not explicitly defined. And Boolean HTML attributes in JSX as a uh, particular function a particular uh, value uh, that is that uh, when you have a property like select or disabled that in HTML doesn't have a true or false, they just have be present, in JSX you can also give a Boolean value. So you can say selected equal true, not just selected like in the HTML, 
or disable equal true or disable equal false. Mm -hmm. So in JSX you can uh, provide a Boolean and not just in HTML that selected is selected. You don't have selected equal true in HTML. It, you just have selected or you don't have it if it's not selected. Disabled or you don't have it if it's not disabled. The input element, for instance. Here you can pass a Boolean that is either true or false to explicit that is selected or not selected, disabled or not selected, disabled, etc. And this apply for all the HTML attributes in uh, that has a uh, true or false behavior, even if without a specific uh, true or false um, statement. Uh, there are no comments in JSX because it's actually it's JavaScript. So if you want to write a comments before uh, components or an elements, you have to open the bracket parentheses and then write comments like in JavaScript. That is ugly, but is the only way that exists in JSX. There is no specific tag for comments in components. Mm -hmm. You have to open a JavaScript, let's say, session with the parentheses and write JavaScript code within. If you need to write code inside a component, and uh, comments inside a component. Um, attributes name, I told you before, protected value change, class becomes um, class name, for became HTML4, and also uh, attributes name are always on camel, or camel case. So the unchanged attributes in HTML, all lower case becomes on change with the capital C. Mm -hmm. Always camel case for all the attributes name for, Java, for HTML. This is uh, for consistency. Uh, and style, if you want to specific an inline style, uh, CSS inline style, that style does not accept a, a string like in uh, HTML, but wants an object. Mm? So you have to pass it as an object, mm? color white instead of a string like you did in uh, CSS. Mm? And similarly, margin minus top, margin minus button, etc., becomes camel case without any space, etc., for coherence within the framework or the library that you want to call it. And then there is uh, a syntax. You, you can, we can find, again, the spread operator, in this case, for JSX. That is a shortcut, as you see here on, the, on this side, uh, to pass all the properties of an object to a component. Mm. So here. Instead of passing MSG and recipient separately, we can say spread operator welcome that contains MSG and recipient, and inside the, the component that they receive that, they will be available as MSG and recipients because they are the object properties included in the object that is passed to this. And here there is another example that shows you that uh, you can have props in which the first element, like we did in JavaScript, in plain JavaScript, you have props in which the first elements of the props, you put it in a variable that you call kind, and then everything else is in this other mm, as a spread operator. So you can use a spread operator before or after the equal sign independently, like you, you did in, ja in plain JavaScript, essentially. Mm. So to pass everything else in one way. Um, We already said the components are function, so you can define these in this way. Um, so components take props as input and returns the elements are the output. Again, in the end, it should be a components that return div, h1, so plain, let's say, uh, elements derived from the HTML uh, DOM nodes. Um, they, again, must be a poor function and idempotent. We already said this uh, the, the hour before. And the state and the life cycle will be managed through a mechanism that's called hooks uh, that we are going to, to see to manage more complex behavior for, for the state and for other elements like the context that is a sort of global variable that is present uh, in React, that can be defined in React. Um, so how many components you're going to create? Uh, the one that you need. So it's typically very common to create many different small components where each component 
does its own work. And so you have the button component. You will have the table row component because that is to personalize the specific behavior of that component of that element. So it's very, very common to have many small components, maybe in one big file, but very small components that can be reused instead of having one big component that does everything with HTML code. So that can be reused and personalized with a more fine grade. So that is very normal. Uh, to, to say to, to use it we are going to, to create smallish components I would say instead of a big big components uh, in general um, the last two things uh, that are uh, that I, I need to, to highlight uh, are about keys and list and about the fragment uh, about elements so in react every list either UL, UL, or OL, or whatever it is a list, uh, must have a key. A key attribute, like this, like this one, so key equal something, uh, that it's unique within the list. Uh, this is to help React identify in their calculation between the virtual DOM and the actual DOM, etc., which elements are changed or added or removed. So use the key as the identifier to understand whether an element has changed or not. If you don't put a key or a unique key inside the list, like you put one as key for all the elements in the list, React will work, but will give you a warning in the browser console that the key must be unique. Uh, if you don't put a key, or if you put a key that is the same, in some cases you will not notice a difference and things will work. In other case, things will start behaving in strange way, for which you remove an element on the list, and instead of the elements that you removed, is removed another one or it's removed after the second one that you remove. That's why, that's because React is not able anymore to track the changes between the virtual DOM and the DOM, and so the update fails in a way. And so you start having strange behavior. And those are because you didn't put a key that is unique within the list that you are rendering on screen. So this is, this is for all the list or sets that are listed on a page with React. You must have a key that is unique within the list. Um, again, there's a special key attribute, for instance, in the LE. Uh, if you have an ID for a, from a dat that stem from a database or stem from anything, like for our exams, the ID could be the course code, because we already have, it's, it's already unique for the exams. You can use it. Um, and key must be specified when building the array of components. Uh, and again, uniqueness is required within the list, not in general. So you can have two lists with the same keys in the two lists, but not within the same list. And the keys are not available as props. So it's just uh, an elements, an attributes that the React uses itself to perform its calculation. It's not a props that you pass that you can retrieve. So in the case of our exam, we can put uh, the course code as a key, but then if we need the course code within the components, we need to pass it as a props as well. We cannot rely on the key to get this information. We need to pass it separately. Uh, and finally, a component should always return a tree of elements with a single root. That means that if you have a component that returns uh, you have a UL, uh, and then you have three LE, and these three LE are the component. You cannot return the three LE directly, because that, uh, that must have a single root. So either you have a component that return the entire UL, so that the single root is the UL, because it's the one that contains everything, but it's not always possible. Or you can create what's called a fragment. 
that is an empty node uh, that you can call it with react.fragment or with this empty tag here in the bottom of the slides that create an empty node that satisfy the requirements that components should always return elements with a single root but in the meantime will not generate a node in the HTML page. So you will see the page with the UL and the LE within, without the single root, the added root element. So if you want to have a components that return a portion of something without a single root, either you have a root element that contains everything, or you can use a fragment like this that is not rendered will not generate anything in the DOM, in the actual DOM of the page. It's just something for React to understand that that is a single node and to comply with the, the definition of, of what a component should return. Okay? Any question? No question. So what we are going to do in the remaining time is to start at least uh, to, to move our exam table that we did last week, in the previous week, in React. At least start. Uh, so we can start from app.js. And the first thing that we need to do is, well, empty uh, app.js because we don't need the, the standard things that were already present. We don't need the React logo moving around. And we already know that we need Bootstrap. So we can install, npm install, React Bootstrap and Bootstrap. And what else we need, if you remember our exam exercise? Which dependency we need? DJS. Anything that we have done. So we can install them exactly as we installed them before in Node. Nothing different. And, and then we'll be added in the package.json. So React Bootstrap is here. DJS is here. Bootstrap is here exactly as it worked for, um, for Node.js in the past. Okay, so we have Bootstrap. If you, if you remember what we, so we need, first of all, what we need? We need uh, some exams, right? Uh, so let me call it fake exams as uh, an array. as an array of objects and let me copy some uh, codes from uh, the previous. So we can have an object is code 0, 1, T, Y, M, O, V, that is name, uh, What is this one? Uh, information system security. Uh, the score is 30 and the date is DJS 2022 0201. And then we can do a similar things for another couple of exams like uh, uh, 01 S Q J O V that is data science and database technology where you got uh, 21 um, last year. 
and then uh, let's put the third one the task code 04 GSP OV and the name is software engineering and the score is 26 and the date is let's say in the future May June there is no exams in May okay, we have our list of fake exams a list of objects like normal JavaScript um, what we need just to have these three lines working there is something in this line in these three lines I wrote that won't work without making another operation the import from the JS we installed it we installed uh, DJS we didn't import anywhere so last week we did import the JS in the HTML page here we have import we have a server that is providing the application so we can write import DJS DJS from DJS where DJ, the second DJS is the name of the library we just installed okay let us delete this then in our app let's try to do just the table that we had last week without nav bar, without everything, just the table it will be a title um, what we, which is the first component that we want to, to write, what we brought in bootstrap last week which is the first thing that you have to write in bootstrap, which is the first elements you have to use in bootstrap main in bootstrap main is a valid tag yes but in bootstrap you wrote main class equal container so bootstrap you always have containers rows columns containers row call as classes and here since we, this is the react version of bootstrap we use the same the, the logic is the same just the name of the components is different mm -hmm. but the first component the div or the main equal uh, class equal container is just a container with a capital C mm -hmm. I, if you look in the documentation you can also uh, in the react booster documentation all, all of this is reported but it follows the same logic that boot, the normal bootstrap and in this container we can say for instance that we can add a CSS class mm, and we call it app so this is the CSS class that we may or we may not have in the app.css or we have so let me delete the standard CSS and we can put it uh, margin top 1 EM just to have something in this definition of this class but why it's give us an error we have to import it exactly so import container 
from React Bootstrap, as we did for DJS. Uh, notice that here it's a named import because we are going to import se several things. We are going to import container, roles, columns, other elements from Bootstrap. There is not just one big object like for DJS. Okay, then what we have in Bootstrap inside a container? A row. Exactly. And inside a row, we just have the table. So inside a row, what we can put it? A column. Um, oh, we can put maybe a, a title here inside this column. So H1, uh, my exams. Just a title. And, and then we need to import the row and calls, like we did for container. And this should be enough for, for, uh, for the, the application to run. So if we, if we say npm start, we should we shall see my exams because that's the only things that we have in the in the table okay Is it correct? Is it what you expected? Yes or no? Or maybe I can give you three choices. So here we don't have warnings. Here we don't have warnings. Is this what you expect? Does it look like bootstrap? We said a container with a row with a column. Do you think that is? Yes or no? No opinions. Probably no. Other that share the probably no. Is not. If you create an H1, or if you look on the documentation of Bootstrap, how an H1 header appear, is not appearing this way. Not even in a million year, probably. H1 should appear in this way, hmm? with calls. And calls should give margin. And the row, hmm? we don't have any margin here. Hmm? So what is missing is missing that I told you, we, we installed two things. We installed the React Bootstrap and Bootstrap. 
and we imported here React Bootstrap, not Bootstrap. So we, what we need to do is to import the CSS of Bootstrap as well. Uh, if you look on the documentation of React Bootstrap, it told you to write this way, import, and then the folder in which the CSS of Bootstrap is, is present, that is bootstrap dist CSS bootstrap dot min dot CSS. And this folder is in node modules. Node modules, there is a folder that's called bootstrap somewhere. Inside bootstrap, there is a folder it's called dist. Inside this, there is a folder called CSS, and inside the folder is this file. And so we are just importing directly the file from node, from node modules. So if we save these, and we look here, at least there is margin, there is a different font, because actually this is the style of Bootstrap that kick in, in this moment. Okay. And these, if we want, these could be a component. This could be a component, like up title component. We can create a small component just from these three lines, if you want. Either in this file or another file. Because it's the minimum elements that represent the title in our, maybe not the minimum, but it's represent the title of our application. So if you want, we can create a component out of it, or also, with, also just with calls H1 and calls, maybe not with everything, if we want to keep the rows in the structure. And we want maybe to change the title according to the components we load, for instance. Hmm? So if we have multiple pages, we can say, okay, this page is up title with my exam properties, and another page is up title with another title passed as a property. Hmm? So we can use the same component to, to change the title of the page if we want, or to import it in other page, in other application. So let's go, let's move on and let's create the table with the exams. So we need another row. And here in this row, instead of creating the table right here, let's create a component. Let's create a component that contains the, the entire table. And we can call that component uh, exam score. So we can create a folder within SRC called the components. And within this folder, we can create a file that is called exam components dot JavaScript. So here we have our exam score component. Which information these components needs to have to render itself? We, what we need to pass in the props. the list of exams. Hmm? So we can have a props, it's called exams, and we pass the variable we created, the object, the array we created at the beginning of this file, so the fake exams variable. Hmm? So this, we, in this case, let me stop the server because we are actually creating an error in this case, because it's not complete. Uh, in this case we pass the array that was called the fact exams, 
fake exams as a props called exams to the uh, component. So we will need, well, first of all, to create the components, but also to import the component. So import exam score from, um, uh, what is, it's in a folder called components uh, and in a file called exam components dot js. So we need to import the components that we are going to create in the other file. Hmm? And we can also omit, if you want, the .js, as you prefer. Yes. Let me rename it. Because we are putting more components inside, so. Any questions? We are passing the exam list as props into the component that we are going to create. And then we import the component here so that it could be used as an element to be rendered. Yes, we could. We could also have the exam list, the fake exams variable in the other uh, page if you want. Uh, I put it here so that we can pass it to as, as a props, only for, for this reason, to pass it as a props. Otherwise, we'd have locally inside the components. It could be reasonable, but to, to exercise more with props so that we can pass it to props. But yeah, absolutely. So here, we need to define our exam score component. And we said that is a function, hmm? exam scores, that receive some props hmm? and returns returns, what returns, exam scores. Let's build it. The table, but before the table, we add a row in which we put exam score. So after the row, we need a call. Exactly. And so we need to import call from Bootstrap, from React Bootstrap. And we also need to import Bootstrap itself, like we did before. OK? So now we need the table. But let's create a table as a component, as a custom component. So let's call it exam table. Exam table has some props or not? Exams equal props dot exams. Because we receive the props from the other file, from the, the main, the container, the components that contain this. So through these objects, we get the exams that we received. Okay, now what we need to do? To the created exam table. So again, function, exam table, and it will be more or less this way the components creation. Create function that does things. 
that either call other, other components or use the standard the DOM nodes from the components. So exam table receives some props because we receive the exams. Uh, return, so here these components doesn't have logic because it's just presentation. So just return immediately. What the return here? The table, in this case the table, the table with a capital T mm, because it's the bootstrap table, so we can import it. The table is striped and bordered, oh striped, just striped, so that the row of the tables are different color. And this is a property of React Bootstrap. And then inside the table, what do we need? T add antibody. In this case, these are the T add antibody that came from the HTML as elements, so with, without the capital T. T add antibody. Inside the add, what do we need inside the add? This is like the HTML. So inside the add, we need a table row, tr, and then th, table head, the cell, uh, exams, no, exam. Then we need uh, score, then we need date and then we need uh, actions and this is identical to the HTML again the difference is that here we are in JavaScript and we are writing elements react elements not HTML file HTML code even if it's look like HTML so the table body, what we need to do? A for each, exactly. For each exam in our list, we need to create a row of the table. And so we can do a for each. We can open the bracket for squares. And we can say props.exam. See? Yes. Um, and we can use R for each. We can also use a map. So let's use a map. So that is uh, dot map. What do we want to map? We want to um, map each, each exam that we have in the um, in the exam list into a exam row hmm, that is the element that we are going to create for each row hmm, that we can also close like this hmm, if we want and we need to create exam row exam row what they need what need to have as props this is a single row that should be able to render itself what we need in the single row we need x hmm? so we can have a prop that's called exam in which we pass x and then we need another thing at least we can also have maybe something like exam name equal x dot name if we want to pass it separately, but it's already in the X object, so we don't need to separate. But if we want, we can also pass multiple properties. But we need another thing. The key, because this is a list. It's a table, but it's a list. Hmm? It's a list of, of items, all, all of the same elements created multiple times. So we need the key. And the key, what could be a good key for us? 
exam code, ax dot code. And so let's create exam row here, here. Function exam row that get some properties. We'll have a return, and in this return, we are going to write something. So what do we need in the exam row? TR, um, and then the four, five, five TDs. But let's create other two components for a didactical um, reason. So let's create the exam data component uh, that have a property, a prop that is the single exam. And then let's create a exam action. that doesn't have properties instead. That is for the buttons. So just for storing the buttons will be always the same independently where we put it. Instead, the exam data is where the actual data of the, of the table will be. So here we are going to create a function exam data that receives some props, return, finally what does this return? TD. So TD props dot exam uh, dot exam dot name then uh, uh, what do we have score and date score and date dot format for wise month month day day because this date is a DJS object so we can we can use it in this way why it gave us error? Um, no, because the, the, the error is for everything, also for name. Because we don't have a single root. So we need to use the fragment to enclose everything. Because each component must return one root element, must have one root element. And so here we have completed the chain because this last component is only made by DOM nodes, by elements that stem from DOM nodes, doesn't have a custom component here. So we can also create the other one, 
uh, the function that is should be easy exam actions uh, easy right now uh, that doesn't have properties so we need we can skip it in the, in the parentheses because we don't have properties for exam action and these can return td uh, let's say button variation variant variant danger that is the React Bootstrap way to put the button in red. And, uh, and then here the X like we did in the past, in the past uh, lecture. And then we can also have a, an icon, we can also have other things inside the X, but it's a button. So we put it something inside the button. And we need to import button because it's get from uh, React Bootstrap, it has the capital B, so we just need to go there and write button and save. And so we have the entire table now. We need to do one more thing. that is hinted by this warning. Exam scores is declared, but its value is never read. Export. Export in the end of the page. The export in JavaScript happens in the end of the page. Export, and we can do a, a named export, exam scores. So that if we need to export multiple things, Separately, we can if we want. Now we just export exam scores, not the other components, because the other components are just used within this file. So we export that, we already imported here. So in theory, if we run this, either we have errors or it works. Let's see. it works. So we have our table with the exam names, the scores, the date, getting, go, that we got from the, um, the, the array that we created with the action. That right now doesn't do anything because they are just buttons. If you want to make it a little bit nicer, instead of the X, we can install a bootstrap icon, the one that you use in the labs. And so instead of the X, we can write I class name equal uh, BI, BI trash tree. and uh, import, uh, so actually this is not needed because it was already imported in the app.js, uh, the import bootstrap. What we need is to import bootstrap icons because it's just used here, uh, and the path is bootstrap icon font, uh, and then the file, not that, that one. Bootstrap icon, font, bootstrap icons.css, uh, like we did for bootstrap. And then we can restart the server. And in theory, now we should see instead of the X, a trash can. When it's reloaded. Small thing. Okay, any question, doubts, clarification? So, while you think about it, maybe. Uh, in the lab, that will be the first part of the Big Lab 1. Big Lab 1 will last four weeks. The first lab will start this Thursday. 
you are, you can imagine what you need to do. You will bring the theme library into React, just as a static page with, maybe even without many components, even with just one big component in, Up, in UpJS. And this is the first part of the Big Lab one. So create, move your film library into uh, React mm, with all the things that we have seen today. Next week, we are going to speak about state. Mm. So right now, we just had props. Next week, we are going to introduce state so that the state of the table could be shared among multiple components and not just pass through one, the, the exams pass through one, uh, one element to the other, maybe we can add a form to add a new exam that will fill that table, that array that we have. So we'll update also the data structure as a state of the application. Uh, if you have any question, I'm still here for five, 10 minutes. Otherwise, uh, have a nice week and we will meet next week. <laughs>